Hello comic fans, here's Earl Grey. For those who have watched some of my videos, it can't be a surprise how much I love Stray Bullets from David Lapham. I was not there from the start, heard from it not before the Über Alles edition came out, which collected the first 41 issues on around 1200 pages. I didn't bought that particular tome because, well, 1200 pages in one softcover collection? That's maybe the worst format ever in my opinion. But a lot of people were all over it. Not enough, mind you, because it's still available online. Well, I waited for these trades in a much more manageable size and man, how I was rewarded. The packaging is of course not the most important thing here, but it's simple, bold and brilliant with the huge title, the very focused, almost abstract cover illustrations, giving you just some details to be intrigued about. But frankly, I have not needed any cover to be lured into Stray Bullets since I've read issue 1, in which a boy called Joey creates an insane body count just on a couple of pages. It had to be the most Quentin Tarantino-like comic book ever. Or maybe some following Stray Bullets issue. I don't know, but it's very safe to say, if you like comics and Tarantino, you have to read Stray Bullets. But I genuinely hope that nobody will ever try to adapt Stray Bullets. Because in my mind it's such a good match with the medium comics that any adaption has to be a disappointment. And while Tarantino seems to be the only director at all who perhaps could manage to balance the unique mixture of violence, genre satire, realism and heart that is Stray Bullets, the story in the comic is still too complex, the characters involved are too much too many, their history, the whole scope of the plot over several timelines, including a made-up parallel universe around Amy Reiska, that's just too much to tackle in one or two movies and I highly doubt one can cope with it even in a TV series. But one of the many great things about Stray Bullets is that it's never confusing. It started as a loose cycle of crime noir stories with characters that seemed to have nothing to do with each other. Overall, Stray Bullets plays in the 70s and early 80s, but there's often a gap of some years between them. This concerned me a bit in the beginning, but it's not a problem at all. On the contrary, you get glimpses into the past, present and future of the protagonists that make it easier to comprehend them and their motives, help them become even more fleshed out characters. Like Criminal from Phillips and Brubaker, we are told about the misadventures of some mobsters, killers and their entourage. There are some interesting similarities for sure. For an example, like in Sin City, we have a CD pub as one of the central settings where a lot of the threads are connected. By the way, there's an hilarious cameo of Chester paying it for it brown. But anyhow, but while Criminal at least partwise focused on the actual deeds, the heists and so on, in Stray Bullets this is most of the time just the frame in which the real plot happens. I mean, of course we witness some brutal killings and violence, but some of the most disturbing scenes in Stray Bullets are not about killing but are about the way, for an example, children are treated, or rather ignored, in a world of brutal chaos. Even though the situations are often so ridiculous that you can't help but to laugh out loud, despite of the agony of the characters. Schadenfreude or gloating is not a nice trait, I know, but comedy and tragedy are different sides of the same coin. No comic shows this better than Stray Bullets. But going back to my comparison with Criminal, despite of the different art style, Stray Bullets focuses much more on the ramifications on the, assass uh, on the associates, especially on the female ones and their bad relationships and dependencies. No female one here is an innocent victim, mind you, at least the mothers, but they are the most powerful, well-rounded characters who drive the story forward. There's, for example, Beth, 
crazy, reckless, sometimes ruthless, but always with these many layers to her personality that make her very relatable. There's Virginia Applejack, maybe the most original character in the whole series. A young girl that just refuses to be crushed by the terrible stuff that happens to her. And if it's escaping into a made-up world in which she reigns as the fantastic mobster queen Amy Racecar. These issues are truly fantastic and you can buy them as a separate collection or maybe even uh, different collections. But I would recommend to read them within the sequence of the other Stray Bullet stories in order to get all the references to the main storyline that are re rearranged through the filter of Amy slash Virginia's uh, imaginative mind. But Stray Bullets is absolutely not only about the ladies. There are, of course, also the guys that are attracted to them. Like Beth's lover Orson, he's desperately in love with her and therefore a dependent victim of her whims. Being a decent, almost uptight guy at heart, at least when he's sober, he purposefully and with the help of a lot of vodka changes into the different personality of crazy Derek, who is loved by Beth. The proximity of love and self-destruction has almost archaic proportions here, if it was not balanced out with lots of humor. And there are the killers. They are the most flamboyant characters, as you can already guess by their names. Spanish Scott, Finger, Monster, and so on and so forth. And despite their in different ways rotten and defective personalities, they often seem to be the ones who are most capable of coping with the world of stray bullets, which says a lot. There have been 10 trades out so far, each one of them containing 8 issues. There's the first run of 5 trades. If you're a bit intimidated by that much reading material, I would recommend to start with volume 6 called Killers. It is fully self-contained and tells the story of Virginia and Eli. You don't need any further information to enjoy this book, even though you will witness a lot of characters that were established in the original run. The last four trades, called Sunshine and Roses, Volume 1 to 4, tell you the events between the first and second trade of the first run. So I guess you can read them directly after the first trade and continue after Sunshine and Roses 4 with trade 2. Anyhow, one of the many strengths of Stray Bullets is that you can read it with lots of different reading orders and each time get a different experience out of it. It's incredibly consistent and there are just no weak points or filler issues, at least in my opinion. And I haven't even spoken about David Lebham's cartooning. He started with a very interesting but somehow still cartoonish art style but has improved and evolved slowly, nearly unnoticeable, into a blend of almost realistic illustration with cartoonish elements. He never shows off with excessive artistry, but is very precise, especially with his pretty conservative layouts and the use of black and white that often borders on perfection. As his storytelling in general, and especially in the later chapters, borders on perfection. He's a master of pacing, of going along with the experience of one character while fading out everything else, of reduction for getting a bigger impact. Just brilliant stuff. As you can witness if you're picking up stray bullets as a random issue in trades or if unwieldy tomes are your thing in the Über Alles edition. Thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.